Longinotti Meccanica is proud to present its latest version of automatic plant for the production of both double layer outdoor paving tiles and thin single layer tiles for indoor and outdoor application. The plant is complete up to the palletizing system. Basic production includes tiles of size 40 cm by 40 cm and 40 cm by 60 cm. Both can be manufactured either with double layer or single layer technology without having to replace the molds of the press. In the layout drawing of the factory are shown the various machines and equipment that make up the plant. The batching mixing unit for the preparation of the wet mix, that is the first layer of traditional double layer tiles or the only layer of single layer tiles. The seven station rotating press model K907MSDS with pressing force up to 900 tons, the automatic tile moving and washing line model CM905FSWD which performs the various operations associated with washing and moving both fresh and cured tiles, the curing chambers, the calibrating grinding line consisting of a two-head calibrating machine model GND50 and a six-head grinding machine model GN50. The shot blasting machine, the palletizing system, and the control room of the plant. This fully automatic production line consists of single machines all assisted by programmable logic PLC of the newest generation. Its correct functioning or possible defects can be monitored in real time from the Longinotti Mechanica factory through a modem interface and a dedicated telephone line. Detailed mimic panels allow the operators on the production floor to visualize step by step every stage of the manufacturing process. The powerful and reliable PLC Siemens S7 runs the entire process, allowing the fast and precise detection of possible malfunctions. All control boards are grouped in a single place to facilitate the task of the controlling operator who, in case of need, can have the help of the aforementioned telemetric check. We can now follow step by step the production phases. Here are stored the granulates of various sizes and colors needed for the different kinds of tiles to be manufactured. The batching mixing unit consists of a group of four hoppers holding three different kinds of granulates and the marble powder. A weighing car to convey the raw materials from the hoppers to the skip of the mixer. A weighing system for the cement. A planetary mixer to mix inerts, cement and water up to the required homogeneity. The mix is prepared without using chemical additives or fluidificants. The control system of the batching unit can store in its memory and process up to 100 different mixing recipes. The mix is then introduced into the press dosator by means of a sloping vibrating channel. In the tank of the dosator, the wet mix is continuously stirred to keep its homogeneity. The automatic dosator pours the wet mix into the molds of the press in the exact preset quantity. This quantity can be easily varied by adjusting the capacity of the dosing cups in order to get different tiles of different thicknesses. These dosing cups have been especially designed with a large diameter and small height to make the discharge easier and more precise even in the presence of a hot and dry climate. In the first station of the press, the wet mix is poured into the molds of the rotating press. In the following two stations, the mold is vibrated with adjustable intensity to match the fluidity characteristics of the mix and the mortar is spread evenly in the mold. The height of the first layer is, in this particular instance, 20 millimeters. An optional device called an upper vibrator, like the one shown here, ensures in any event the perfect and even spreading of the wet mix in the mold before the pressing operation. This upper vibrator can be fitted in the second or the third station of the press. The fourth station of the press lodges the automatic belt dosator of the second layer. This device doses the exact quantity of the second layer 
and distributes it smoothly and evenly on top of the already leveled first layer. The special design of the belt dosator allows the adjustment of the dosed quantity. This reflects in turn in the possibility to manufacture tiles of different thicknesses without the need to use different moulds or inner frames, thus improving economy of production. A peculiar characteristic of the second layer belt dosator is that contrary to traditional devices, it definitively eliminates the so-called wedge effect, that is, a different thickness at opposite edges of a tile. The fifth station of the press is preset for another optional device, the pre-compression, which in this particular instance hasn't been required. In general, the pre-compression facilitates with difficult raw materials the absorption of water from the first to the second layer in order not to slow down the moulding pace of the press. The pre-compression force is 25 tonnes. The sixth station of the press is the moulding or pressing station. The immense pressing force of the K907 machine, necessary to mould two tiles at a time in the 40cm by 40cm size single layer, favours an excellent compacting also in the traditional double layer production and reduces the relevant moulding time. The pressing pads with fast electromagnetic attachments can be removed and then reassembled in a very short time and this is particularly important when producing single layer tiles and a daily cleaning of the pressing pads and a change of filters is required. This operation doesn't take more than two minutes. You can see that the pressing pads are pre-arranged for the production of single layer tiles with the collecting pipes already connected. To change production from double layer to single layer, one only needs to change the pressing pads and activate the MS single layer system. An innovative management of the pressing phase has also favoured an increase of productivity of the machine. In the seventh and last station, the moulded tiles are taken out from the press by an extractor, then picked up by a vacuum suction device belonging to the automatic tile moving washing line. The automatic tile moving line with horizontal deposit is equipped with a vacuum pickup device able, if required, to turn the tiles by 180 degrees for their face-up laying on the transport tray and to wash them soon after their collection from the press. The tile turning system can be deactivated if a deposit face down on the transport tray is required. You can see that special suckers pick up the two 40x40 40 40 tiles, turn them in vertical position and carry them to the washing area where a system of experimented reliability quickly performs the direct washing of their surface. The washing system is equipped with two rows of water sprayers. Above them, a compressed air collector removes the washing water, leaving the tile surface dry. Once the washing operation is completed, another two similar suckers, but arranged on a second car, take over the washed tiles, turn them horizontally, and lay them quickly but smoothly on the steel transport tray. The double turning system has the advantage of leaving the surface of the tiles in sight for better control and to avoid the effacing of clouds or stains due to salts building up during the curing stage. Avoiding such stains is of great importance for tiles manufactured for outdoor use, the surface of which is not to be ground or otherwise processed. The suckers are equipped with special foam rubber to allow even tiles with engraved surfaces to be picked up and turned as well. The distance between transversal slats of the tray has been fixed on the basis of the sizes to be manufactured in order to optimize the support of the fresh molded tiles and prevent them from distortion during the curing phase. The transport trays can be superimposed up to a stack of 30, depending on the weight of the tiles they carry. The stack of trays is then moved to the pickup station of the line and from here it is taken and ferried by a forklift to the curing room. Instead of a forklift in a more automated plant configuration, the job is carried out by a robot car. When this video was recorded, new curing chambers were under construction and the curing area was temporarily located within the production line. Having put down the stack with fresh tiles, 
the forklift picks up a stack of trays holding cured tiles and carries it to the dedicated station of the automatic moving line. While a tray is filled with fresh molded tiles, another tray is emptied of cured tiles and made ready to receive fresh tiles soon afterwards. The cured tiles are also picked up from the tray through a vacuum suction device and subsequently deposed on the path which will convey them to the calibration, grinding and shot blasting line. The deposit of the two tiles may take place in two rows or on a single row. If deposed on two rows, the tiles can afterwards be conveyed in a single row by means of the automatic device now shown. This device is simple in its working and doesn't add any complication to the whole line. It can be adjusted to different tile sizes and to a different feeding speed. Once on a single row, the tiles may or may not be turned upside down before entering the calibrating machine according to how they were put on the tray, face up or face down. The two heads calibrating machine has the task of smoothing away possible thickness disuniformities between different tiles by a slight leveling off of their back surface. Calibration is in any case useful for the subsequent grinding process, but it is necessary when a chamfer is to be added to the final product, especially when producing single layer tiles. After leaving the calibrating machine, the tiles are turned upside down to then be fed into the grinding machine. In this special instance, the wash beton tiles do not require either calibration or grinding, and therefore the two turning devices have been deactivated. In general, however, presence, arrival and feeding of tiles are all controlled automatically. At the front of the grinding machine, a special motorized device detaches the tiles of a few millimeters from each other in order to protect the edges from impact damage. Both the calibrating and the grinding machine shown here are equipped with heads of new design, strong, easy to control and to maintain, which can be driven mechanically or pneumatically. As a rule, the mechanically operated heads are the ones dedicated to calibrating with diamond discs or to grinding while the pneumatic heads are dedicated to the more delicate polishing operation. In addition to the central switchboard, each head of both machines is provided with its own control panel. After leaving the grinding machine, the tiles pass a drying path with hot air blowers arranged over and beneath it. Thus dried, the tiles can be shot blasted in the special machine shown here and after this operation, they reach the horizontal palletizing system. First of all, the tiles must be arranged in such a way as to form a complete layer. Layers are then stacked one upon the other on the wooden pallet. We can see one of these layers being arranged. This operation may vary according to the dimensions of the pallet. The tiles, soon after leaving the shot blasting machine, are accelerated to form a row of three and then sent to the collection plane where a second row of three tiles will complete the layer. Once the layer has been completed, in this particular instance with six tiles, the vacuum collecting system lowers, takes up the whole layer and deposits it on the pallet. As many layers are deposed on the pallet as necessary to reach the required height. All movements of the machines are simple and reliable. The path is made with clutched rollers which become idle when the tile stops. It is possible to switch from one size to another by simply resetting the machine's program. The pallets filled with tiles are moved by a three-chain path and ultimately are taken away by a forklift.